welcome back to the SMR TV studio. I am joined by Natalie and Martin, um, who are two of our submit, uh, two of the people of the project. One of the projects that was submitted for the SMR Foundation. The you, the full presentation of that you're going to see tomorrow here on SMR TV. But we thought, why not chat a little bit beforehand and find out because it's an incredibly inspiring project. It's an incredibly important topic. Um, for that purpose, for one, Natalie, maybe you can tell us a little bit about who you are and the agency and, and kind of how you got into this? Sure. So, um, 4 started in 2011 in South Sudan, uh, right before independence. Um, and we specialize in working in difficult environments and challenging environments. So our goal is to try and bring really rigorous, high quality research in places where people think that's generally not possible. So we started in South Sudan and then we moved into Somalia. We started in Congo a few years ago. Um, and now we're working throughout Africa and the Middle East um, with 12 different country offices. It's incredibly inspiring. It's it's so brave that you went to the areas where it, where it needs the most insights and it's the hardest to reach. So thank you for doing really thank you for doing that. Is there a, a specific reason that drove you to go in that direction, or you you live there, or? Well. One of the things that we aim to address in our work is that we really feel that the development and humanitarian community can benefit from high quality research and making sure that policies and programs are evidence-based and data-driven. Um, and so we decided to go into these markets and try and fill that gap so the decision makers have the information that they need. That's, that's fantastic, thank you. And Martin, you are involved specifically in a project that has to do with uh, female hygiene products um, in the Congo, if I remember correctly. Can you tell us a little bit about this project um, and what is the situation and um, what kind of, what did you find out from it? Sure, um, so the project started in uh, 2016 and uh, in uh, collaboration with Catholic Reef Services. And the situation was that Catholic Reef Services had, um, had a big program uh, to support like uh, girls going to school uh, and they were like distributing grants. And what they found is that like, if, even though like they were giving these grants, uh, there were like some girls missing school every, uh, every month. Uh, for a few days. So they, they were wondering what was happening and they started talking with the girls and after some time they discovered that menstruation was keeping them from going to school. So they actually reached out to us because they didn't have any data and there is very little research uh, on, on this topic uh, in, in, in the DRC and elsewhere in Africa. Um, so this is how the whole project started. So we first worked in um, Bandaka, which is in Equator province in northwestern DRC, uh, with a large uh, data, like la large survey of girls, female tutors and boys and what we found was very interesting is like like the first core result is that 27 percent of girls um, in, in school missed at least one day of school during the last three months uh, because of menstruation and 10 percent of girls each month uh, miss at least one day of course because of menstruation. Uh, so this result shows that school absenteeism is linked with menstruation, that there is like a, that there is a group of girls missing school ev uh, every month uh, because of this. Um, other, other very interesting results is that we found an urban and rural divide uh, and the fact that uh, accessing uh, menstrual hygiene products was linked uh, with income and with where you live because accessibility is um, much more difficult uh, in, uh, in rural areas. So so the sanitary napkins are much more available in cities, uh, while in uh, rural areas, girls usually uh, use a torn piece of clothes, for example, like for like 90% of them. Uh, so, and and this has consequences because when when they use like um, a product which is not like actually made uh, for menstruation, uh, there is, for example, the f a bigger, bigger fear of leaking uh, in, in school, uh, which can prevent them from going to school as well because of this fear. Uh, but we also found that pain uh, was like the main cause of, uh, of school absenteeism. Um, so then we shared these results with, uh, with CRS, and uh, they managed to fund with UNICEF a second project in 2017 uh, in three areas, so around Kinshasa, semi-urban, in rural areas in southern DRC, in Okatonga, uh, and in displaced camps uh, in, uh, in North Kivu in Eastern Jersey. Uh, and the goal was to like, compare these three areas and see like, if the knowledge and attitudes and practices of girls uh, were similar, what were the differences and what could be done in these different contexts. And so we found that of course like, there were a lot of, of uh, there were some sim similarities on the knowledge uh, that girls uh, have very limited knowledge uh, on menstruation. For example, like the concept of menopause is very little known, even among the female tutors, um, but also like some differences while in the, displace, in the displaced camps, uh, the situation is really concerning about like girls going to school. Like uh, we, we have huge numbers about 
40 percent of girls uh, miss at, missed at least one day of school uh, during the last three months because of menstruation. So this much this number is very high compared to other areas. Uh, and um, and and yeah, other very interesting results that we shared with CRS and UNICEF to continue the research. I can imagine you have probably f um, experienced some um, obstacles while doing this research. Are you at liberty to share how the process went when you were trying to actually, for example, speak to these girls or, or find out um, uh, actually the, the real situation? Yeah, of course. So when you measure school absenteeism uh, linked with menstruation, um, we, we uh, started uh, designing the questionnaire and we found that girls uh, during the pilot, we found girls that were just saying that they were sick and they didn't want to, sh to share that it was menstruation, which was the reason of school absenteeism. So we designed the questionnaire in a way that you had the, 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 fir um, the, the first questions uh, were a way to like as an icebreaker uh, just to like put the girl at ease uh, and then we were asking the question several times uh, in different ways and and this is how we uh, managed to build this indicator uh, and and so the question didn't arrive you know right away but after 50 questions and after like really like uh, reminding the girl about that yeah, you, ha you have to feel comfortable about about this question about what we are doing but yeah of course the social taboo is very strong we also found that in uh, in Okatonga during our research uh, uh, last year that the girls really um, felt really ashamed talking about that and this is a result in itself uh, that this uh, this social taboo uh, has to be overcome but we also found that girls and, and tutors really wanted to talk about it and uh, really wanted to share their, their experiences because they finally had the chance uh, to say something uh, to say something about it and not being considered because one of the main uh, issues also is that once the girl starts menstruating she's seen as like um, how, how can I say like ready to get married for example in some areas so she becomes like she really um, in, in the mind of like the family she becomes like a, a woman uh, and then she's yeah she's destined for like other things which is also why like for example like she 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 has to leave school at some point because uh, the parents will say oh no she has to get married but also uh, she's also more looked at home uh, and she's not allowed to see boys anymore in some in some cases because uh, the parents just fear that they will be like a, 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 a pregnancy uh, so this is also like a, uh, like the social tabby was uh, of course uh, really important and we had to design the study very carefully to respond to this and as Natalie mentioned the most important thing is the impact and the change that comes out of it if you can very quickly summarize how how can maybe this help the You're situation and the girls so um, we really had the um, at the starting phase because uh, we didn't have solid numbers uh, in in Africa and in DRC with uh, with large samples. So this is what we're offering now to uh, to CRS and UNICEF, like co-indicators, and they can actually start advocating uh, for this and say like this like these are solid numbers. And we found that this is actually like something we have to work on. Now uh, they're not working on like specific programs, but they more like want to um, include menstruation in uh, over over programs like education, like health. Uh, for example. Thank you both so much for the really, really inspiring work that you do and for making a difference. Um, it, it's really just, thank you really, I cannot say that enough. And thank you for coming by and telling us about this. And please watch the presentation tomorrow. It's yeah. incredibly, incredibly important. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.